But Robin convinced all of us that she could speak Cody and that she would mediate our relationships. There are individuals that command respect simply by their presence alone. I'm thinking like the James Earl Jones types. They just have that aura about them. Then there are the types of individuals who are sponges, who are easily manipulated, whose persona is likely to adapt to whatever new environment they find themselves in. Anyone care to guess which one I think Cody Brown is? Let's just say I could never imagine Cody as the voice of Mufasa or Darth Vader. Some people struggled their whole lives to find their own identity, and it really, it's quite sad. Cody has talked a lot about his lifelong quest to find favor with his father, which is what I suspect led him down the path of polygamy and fundamentalism in the first place. And then he meets Robin, and we see this shift from happy-go-lucky polygamist and family man into a deeply paranoid tyrant who sees his own family as a threat. Usually, we say it's not fair to put the downfall of a relationship or a breakup of a family on the other woman, but in this case, I believe Robin absolutely is a puppet master, using Cody as a tool to get what she wants. Today, we are going to take a deeper dive into Robin's sinister nature. We have a lot to talk about. Let's get into today's video. <laughs> Hey everyone, what's up? It's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. Let's start off back with that opening clip. This notion that Robin speaks Cody. From the beginning, Robin was able to manipulate Cody into believing that he was speaking a different language than the rest of his family. And the reason why there were problems between him and his original three wives is because his other wives just weren't speaking his language. It couldn't have been because there was a fundamental problem with how they were trying to structure their family. No, no, no. We have Robin entering the picture and graciously offering her translating services. Do you think you speak Cody? You think you get Cody? I think I get Cody pretty well. He can be misunderstood very easily because he says everything that's in his head. Most people filter it, he doesn't. It's hard for other people to understand. Because Robin says that she can speak Cody, and I'm like, bull She convinced all of us that she needed to be there in the relationship, that she can speak Cody and we can't. I don't know if I really need someone to translate for me, but she likes to position herself as like, I speak Cody. She says that to my children. Mm -hmm. And my kids are like, it's our dad. We don't really need you to speak Cody. It does bug me. That one does bug me. Hindsight is always 2020, right? Years later, here we have Janelle and Christine acknowledging that they let themselves be duped. And all of the adults bear culpability as to what became of this family. And Cody, in my opinion, bears the most because he was the son that these households were orbiting around. And he is the one that failed the most. So I don't want this video to come off like I'm a Cody apologist because I certainly am not. I'm big into true crime and I've always been fascinated by any of the numerous cult documentaries that are out there. Cases that make you go, that can never happen to me. I would never confess to a crime I didn't commit. I would never sell my house and donate the proceeds to a cult leader. I would never act at the behest of someone else. I mean, how does a Keith Rainieri get women to get branded? These are adults that have their own agency after all. It defies logic and yet it happens all the time. If I'm looking at Cody's situation, I'm thinking how does one throw out an entire family to start a new one with another woman? And yet I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably are like, I know someone who knows someone who did just that. Cody is fully responsible for his own actions and the abandonment of his family. But the why behind his actions, the one pulling the strings, is Robin. We've heard about Robin being the Cody whisperer for years, but we actually see it in action in this season 18 finale during Cody and Mary's final breakup talk. She's saying that feels like blame. She's saying the okay. thing I that said, you've said. Let and me. Done. Can I? Can I? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, it's just like, shut the fuck up, Robin, and let these two talk. Because Robin isn't trying to mediate a misunderstanding. Cody and Mary understand each other perfectly. 
Robin was trying to guide them toward the outcome that she wanted, which would be Mary continuing to cling to hope whilst funneling money into the family bank account. Robin had no care that Cody is actually growing to resent her for constantly pushing this narrative or that this is insanely cruel to do to Mary. People, even if they are family, are a means to an end for Robin. How does Cody go from this? She's a sister from the same mister, and he's a brother from another mother. <laughs> to this. And, and Robin and I are going to be like this. You're not going to separate us. They want their dad, but they don't want Robin. That's not going to work. And that's just the relationship we're going to be in. In season one, we would often see his kids clamoring around him. These kids could not get enough of Cody. They loved having him around. Now, these very same family members, his children that he once had individual bonds with, are now viewed as a threat. If these kids want their dad, they're going to have to take Robin too. And these kids don't want that. We see this back and forth during season 18 about Janelle being under the impression that in order for her kids to see Cody, they had to make this grand apology to Robin. But Cody insists that he walked that back. But Cody doesn't have a relationship with any of his kids except for McKelty, who just so happens to have found favor with Robin. Here's the thing. Tony McKelty loved me and Robin. And we know that. We have a good relationship with them. So Cody says nobody has to come and kiss the ring, so to speak, but his actions say otherwise. The only kid who gets to have a semi-decent relationship with him is Robin Approved. Many of us have come to the conclusion that the pandemic was the best thing that could have happened for Robin because it completely squashed any need for Robin to have to fake the funk with the rest of the family. She could muster up the mask for an occasional Zoom, but she didn't have to pretend at all these family gatherings. Robin somehow convinced the OG3 that they needed her in order to talk to Cody. If she wasn't there, how on earth would they understand each other? The really disgusting thing is that Robin also attempted to do this with Cody and his kids, but his kids weren't having it. So is it Robin or is it dad? I think it's dad. I really do. Your dad's been talking to his doctor. He has all these ideas about what the rules need to be. He's, he's an independent decision maker. Yeah, he's also a freedom lover. And you this know? isn't very free of him. <laughs> Gabriel can smell the bullshit. None of this sounds like the dad that he's known his entire life, which has been a lot longer than his dad has known Robin. But Robin and Cody really want to get the point across that it's Cody behind the rules, not Robin. People need to stop blaming Robin. As Robin says, Cody's not one to be run by one of his wives. But if they wanted us to believe that, they never should have filmed this scene. But Mary's been quarantined literally for weeks now. Would you be comfortable with her helping us with Ari and Saul? Could I don't know. Well, what, I mean, I don't know what, like, how is everybody else going to see that, Cody? I mean, it sure seems to me like Cody is asking Robin if it's okay to bend the rules. Why would Cody need permission to bend his own rules? What patriarch would ask his wife, who merely possesses a woman's brain, what her thoughts were on the rules? I mean, can Robin even spell rules? Saying, Now's not the time to modify the rules, I no, guess. No, 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 no. Okay, so that's a no to modifying the rules. Got it, Robin. We got it. Cody's not really giving head of the family energy here. I've been mentioning in my last couple videos that I'm starting to get really sinister vibes about just how isolated Robin's kids are inside her house. Cody very much is portraying this outsider's bad. Robin is the only one that is safe energy. And it seems like the same goes for her children. We all started feeling really bad for Mary during the pandemic because Janelle and Christine, they had lots of family, their kids around to quarantine with. But Mary was all by herself. So it really seemed extra cruel for Robin to tell Cody that Mary couldn't join their campfire. Just check out everyone's reactions here when Robin finally gave the okay for Mary and her kids to reunite. And I'm on my way over to Robin's because I get to go see the kids. I've been begging Robin and Cody for a really long time to be able to come over and see them. Yeah, let her in. You want to go let her in, Saul? Yeah, 
Can her her in? Yep, yep, you can touch her. <laughs> it's just been a really, really long time, and it's just not normal and natural for family to be separated like this. Look how emotional the kids are. Saul asks, can I touch her? Dayton is crying. These kids have been starved of human interaction. And Mary, Mary could not be more excited that she gets to see Robin, Cody, and her kids. This was Christmas 2021. So we are two and a half years further into these kids isolation and indoctrination. And honestly, I am truly worried about their well-being. This question that Cody answered during that interview he gave a few months ago always struck me as odd. And I wanted to ask Cody, um, do you still believe in eternal marriage and the covenant that you made, you know, with those with all four of your wives, do you expect to be reunited with any of your now ex-wives on earth in the afterlife? No. Um, I, I'm not saying I don't believe in eternal marriage, but I think that's on the merits of the marriage and how God judges it. Um, I think um, the covenant of eternal marriage is something leadership, um, maybe Joseph Smith, they made up this stuff. And the reason that they made it up was because they wanted to give power of people over other people in a relationship. Um, by the way, thank you for the question, Amy, but I, I totally believe that it's a control issue. And it's an issue of, of they introduced plural marriage. At the same time, they introduced eternal marriage. And what that did is that gave men the opportunity to have more than one wife, while the wife had the promise of having her husband indefinitely because um, simply of the psychology of the two different sexes and what they look for in these relationships. So I'm not saying that I don't believe in plur um, eternal marriage, but I think that's on the merits of the marriage. And if you didn't have your stuff together or didn't like each other in this life, you're not together in the next life. And I, and I argue that point with Robin's other mother all the time because she wants... She wants that marriage. She wants to own that man in the next life. And I feel bad for him because I'd be running from her. Hopefully she's not listening. Oh, wait, God, can you guys edit that out? There's people that know that. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me. This struck me as odd because Cody is not talking about Alice, Robin's mom. He's talking about Paul's first wife, Robin's other mother. What kind of conditioning has been going on between Robin and her mom that the spin is that Robin's other mom is some psycho who wants to lay claim to Paul, not only in this life, but the hereafter. We don't know anything about Robin's other mom. Maybe she is a monster, but isn't it funny how Robin's journey in polygamy has almost mirrored her mother's exactly? I mean, if we want to talk about creepy, Robin forced her kids to adopt a new man as their father, just like her mom did to her. Robin's mom was the one who instilled in Robin this idea to put on a honeymoon facade at all times so that your shared husband will favor your house. And now we are hearing from Cody's own mouth that Robin's other mother, her dad's other wife, has unsafe vibes. Safe is, of course, a therapy word that the Browns love to throw around. We really see Cody's former laissez-faire attitude come to a head with Robin's my way or the highway demeanor during the recommitment ceremony when Maddie poses the question about what would happen if they refused to sign that mission statement. And then we're going to sign it and have all the kids sign it. What if we don't agree with our mission statement? Anybody who disagrees with that mission statement? Then they better move out. Hates America. Oh, geez. Come on, man. Seriously? Oh, he is. When the show first started, the adults said that they would never push their religion on their kids. And Cody has always historically been a champion of individual freedom, like Gabe said, even especially for his children. But Robin is just baffled. How could Cody just allow the kids to not sign this contract in order to be a member of this family? For Robin, you buy in or you get out, literally. If this 16 or 17-year-old Madison doesn't sign this thing, she could be out on the streets for all Robin cares. 
What a gem. And for all Robins complaining about being voted off Brown Island, let's all never forget her on-camera reaction to Mary's suggestion that she host a neutral Christmas gathering. I guess we do Christmas Eve here and then Christmas morning at Robin's house. Like, I don't know, do I call them and have them come over when you guys are all at odds? That sounds Is that scary. We can't risk scaring Robin with having some honest conversations. In my opinion, it's pretty clear Robin learned this pattern of isolation from her mother, and she is perpetrating that onto this family that she entered into. I believe we are seeing insights into Robin's motivation when she makes comments about worrying about having a fair share for herself and not automatically being lumped in with Cody. I think Robin will hitch her wagon to Cody's for as long as a relationship financially sustains her. But as soon as the well runs dry, I think she will absolutely start looking for greener pasture. And then I believe that's when Cody will have to do a lot of hard work at reconciling the mess that he has made of his life. Maybe he was never truly in love with the OG3. Who knows what to believe anymore? But I think one thing is pretty universally agreed upon and that the kids before Robin came into the picture all felt loved by their dad. Cody wants to make it clear that he and Robin are never going to be separated. But I'd like to ask, what are you so afraid of if you were, Cody? Have you lost the ability to think for yourself? And I'm being earnest in asking that question. This is all very sad and very worrisome. As always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Check out my second channel, Sarah Spills. A link for that will be in the description of this video. Follow me on Instagram, Threads, and X at Reality Squad, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Much love.